Hey folks, it's Captain Paul Brawley with Fish Finder Guide Service here with another week of Texas fishing tips. This, today we're going to start out um, in this area right here. We kind of talked about it last week. Um, I fished it a couple of times this past week. And the area where this grass is starting to meet the sand, which is about in this line. You can kind of see a boat on the map there running. He's kind of running that line. There's a line right in here where all this prettier grass meets a deeper sand section. And right on that transition, we were catching some really nice trout. Um, I will say we were using um, popping corks and live shrimp. We were using about a 15-inch drop with a number three cow hook just like your croaker hook but a number three a smaller gap hook um we were making drifts now um we've had a norther and so um we uh have a little cooler temperatures and i will say the wind is coming out of a little bit different direction it's not going to make much of a difference because it has east to it so we were we were going uh southeast so you guys will be coming back northeast in this direction here. Now, that being said, the tide is pretty far up in the mornings. So you may set back a little bit, um, starting further back here, making your drifts in. Because with that higher tide and, and earlier in the morning, those fish may be a little bit more up on the flat and not so much on that transition. But at some point in the day, maybe like 10 o'clock in the morning, I would say they will move out on that transition. But those trout that were in there were all, you know, um, your 16 to 19 inch class trout. Really good trout. Really pretty, really healthy. But um, that's kind of what I did as far as part of my, one of my trips or a couple of my trips this last week. And it seemed to work out real well. So if you're looking for some nice speckled trout and some fun um, using popper corks and shrimp. Everybody's got plenty of shrimp now, so that shouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, right in there seems to be a really good location. Okay, we're going to remain um, around in the same area. What we're going to be looking at is the shoreline over here behind Pita Island, around to this point right here. That area in there has a little trough that kind of runs here. It has sand holes that are all past here and here and on all that sand up closer to the beach you're going to be looking for redfish i would go ahead and get a box of the sardines um, you're going to want to cut the tails off of them uh, you're going to use a little bit bigger hook like a number five to six kale hook you're going to hook those things under the chin and out through the top of their head between their eyes. No weight, just a direct tie, either line with a leader to your braid or just straight to your braid. You're going to tie your hook, and you're going to launch those things all the way up to the beach right there. Uh, you'll see a transition where where the there's like land or grass, and then the sand's just before it. You're going to land in that sand right over there. The tide's considerably up from what it's been, so you're going to be throwing pretty far up on that beach and you're looking for redfish. Now back over here where I was telling you there's a trough, up and down that trough there's also a channel that kind of runs back towards the uh, CPNO intake here. Off of the edge of that channel or out in this trough we're using live shrimp under popping corks. Um, I'm using a little bit more of a drop in here. I'm using more of an 18 inch drop. I am putting a very small pinch weight on the middle of the line in between the shrimp and the cork. And I'm fishing this area right off that trough. And there's been some black drum and there's been some nice trout in that trough. In that trough. There's not a ton of black drums, but you may pick up one or two here and there. You can see like where they're making the water off colored a little bit but all through that zone there you're going to keep uh, just keep either shrimp and corks going here or if you get over here um, to the right side or i would say 
the north side of the CPNL channel, this whole shoreline right here is laden with sand pockets, and it is great for red fishing. Now, that being said, the last two times I've been there, there's been kayakers there, and I haven't been able to squeeze myself in there. Um, one time I did, the other times I, I haven't been able to get in there because people were there. So um, you may jump out and wade over there, I don't know, but I'm just telling you, there's a few reds right in that area. All right, so now that we've got some tide again, um, spring tides, this area here, all through here, we're going to be looking for red fish in there. We're going to be making long drifts, mainly throwing lures. Um, you can throw gold spoons. You can throw anything that has a paddle tail. The um, down south lures are nice. Um, Berkeley power baits are nice. I like using sometimes the um, uh, bass assassins that have the tails. They have the pumpkin seed one with the yellow tail or green tail. Making drifts back through here with it's a southeast wind or back this way if it's a northeast wind. We're going to be making some pretty long drifts through there. Um, they take about 45 minutes, the drifts do. Uh, be real patient. Best, And I know I've said this before, once you get to this end, don't turn around and run back through this. Come out, come around these islands, back up this channel, back up the intercoastal and jump the bar to make your next drift. You've already made a 45 minute drift. So there's no reason in tearing this area up, especially if you're gonna be trying to fish it. Now this is not fast. It is a slower, it's a slower deal. You may only get one or two bites on the drift, but there are some nice reds all through that zone there. Just keep consistent, keep throwing way out in front of you. Keep making a bunch of casts and see if you can make it work for you. Um, that being said, some people were asking about sheep heads way out here, all the way out here on these jetties. Either side, you'll see people out there catching sheep heads. Um, the way we're catching the sheep head is we're using a Carolina rig with a half ounce weight with a circle hook a real small one like a number five aught circle hook number four aught circle hook hooking the shrimp to the horn just like if you were drifting with shrimp uh, we're throwing up to the rocks we're kind of letting it come down the rocks and right on the trough where the rocks meet the sand we are catching the sheep heads um, you better have you a good trolling motor with a spot lock on it there's no really anchoring up out there so basically you are going to go out there and you're going to spot lock uh, 20 yards off of an edge or 15 yards off of an edge, you're going to be throwing back up to the rocks and letting it come down the rocks to the bottom and catching the sheep heads. We are using the circle hooks so we can avoid hooking up with the rocks. Sometimes your egg weight will get caught up in the rocks. There's not a lot you can do. Work it and see if you can get it out. If you can't, well, you got to snap it off and start over again. But the people that are asking about the sheep heads, there they are. Y'all have a good day. Take care. Don't get no scraps with each other on the water. Be nice and courteous and catch a bunch of fish.